Uh, welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, we're just gonna go through this high voltage probe that I have in front of me here. Uh, this particular one is from Testec. It is type TTHVP40. And has a working range of up to 40 kV for DC and 28 kV AC. Um, now this particular probe here, this is more aimed at electronics. Uh, traditionally of old, it would be used on TV sets with the old cathode ray tubes to measure the high voltage transformer on that, the flyback transformer. Um, and it's probably used on amplifiers and stuff like that. This isn't the kind of high voltage probe that I use on the distribution networks that I work on. That's a completely different concept and a completely different video altogether, really. Um, so it comes in our box here, this is the label side. Inside that, you have another carton with the actual probe inside. And with the contents, you get a little manual in four different languages, or there's not much to this. You get the actual probe itself. It sits in uh, these two little cutouts to keep it safe. And then we get a bag of little tips to go on the end of the probe here, which we will tip out. So we get our standard uh, pointy probe tip there that screws onto the end um, and then with this one on if I remember correctly it does fit in the box still yet so you can still get it in the box with the short probe tip on with any of the other probe tips it won't fit in the box anymore so you have to take them off um, we have that one here and we have uh, a little hook and then we have a plate connector with a nut to screw on the end as well. And obviously with this being standard thread, I think it's an M5 thread, you could put any other form of uh, connector on here as well, or probe tip I should say. And then uh, just attach to it with a standard nut and hold it in place. Um, so that's our probe there. Down at this end we have the connection leads. Obviously when you set this up, this will go onto the high voltage connection at this end. Um, the high voltage circuit you need to clip onto the earth flat. Here you have the two connections that go into the instrument. This will work with either a voltage meter or even an oscilloscope as well with the correct adapter. And you need all of these connected up in order to get this to work. This is a straight resistive divider. We'll get a mega out and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so there is no isolation between the meter point and the high voltage circuit. So if something fails in this divider, you can end up with high voltage through onto your test instruments or even worse if you happen to have hold of something. So generally when I test this, this it tends to be a hands-off approach. Um, although you can utilize this and hold this probe if you want to. Uh, it's not what I would generally try and do. Uh, normally this is a 1000 to 1 volt ratio. However, it does depend on what instrument you connect it into. And it does tell you in your little safety instructions here. Um, not that one because that's the wrong language. Uh, come on. There we go. So when you're on a 10 mega ohm input impedance on the meter, which is your usual DC range, it's 1000 to 1 ratio. When you're on 1 mega ohm input impedance, which is generally AC ranges, uh, and an oscilloscope as well, it's a 2000 to 1 ratio. Uh, and we have uh, 1 to 1 kV to 20 kV, it is 5% accuracy, and 20 kV to 40 kV, we are 6% accuracy on DC, and on AC volts, we are 5% accuracy. Uh, no range specified, although we are 0 to 300 hertz on the AC voltage uh, and the accuracy is specified at uh, 60 hertz. Um, other things we know on this, so on your input impedance of the actual probe itself, the high voltage side, this is 1 giga ohm. Uh, so the high voltage probe, it has 1 meter of cables, so that's to your instrument and then another meter of cable there to your earth of your high voltage circuit. Um, comparison to a standard multimeter probe, uh, that gives you uh, a comparison to the size there. Overall, 
the probe itself it's split up into two sections so we are this is your handhold this is the H V part with the sheds on here and that part itself is around about 210 mil long overall we are 330 mil long going up to 380 with that particular probe tip on there um, so as I said it's purely a resistive divider circuit so there is uh, no isolation between the uh, two points there we can uh, look at so on our meter itself so this is the resistive part for the meter and we are around about one mega ohm hopefully you can see there it's one mega ohm so that's the part that the meter would see if i take this out here and just plug in to here and we go on to our actual hv earth connection you can see we are at zero ohms there they are directly shorted together and if i go on to the uh, probe tip up there it's going to be overload because this can't measure above 60 mega ohms i think this goes to max so if we swip over to uh, 50 volt insulation test and hit the go button on that there we go you can see we're around about 900 mega ohms 950 mega ohms so i say purely resistive divider circuit it's not going to give you any isolation from your high voltage or whatever high voltage circuit you are testing whatsoever. So I'll just clear this out of the way and I'll show you some examples of this unit in operation. So one of the easiest ways of demoing these high voltage probe is actually with some insulation testers that I have in front of me here. We have the CA6526 set to a thousand volts. This instrument has one of the worst regulators uh, out of all the insulation testers I've tested so it's a good example for this. Then we have here the 1587FC currently set up to measure DC volts with our probes in the relevant sockets here and have the channel on new and if we hit go button you can see we've got uh, 1099 volts coming out here 10 mega ohms and 1096 volts on the channel on new unit there so that all works good we'll just swap over the leads onto the fluke 83 here um, because whilst this one's worked okay, if you have an instrument that doesn't have the DC range, uh, you will quickly go to overload. If we press the button again, and you can see we've got the same response from the Chevron 1096 volts, still 10 mega ohms, but we are reading overload on the Fluke 83 there. This doesn't have uh, 1000 volt or nearly 1100 volt measurement capability. So we can use our high voltage probe to do this and what we need to do is take out our two leads there from the probe here that you've got uh, uh, just in front of them we put the measurement terminals into the fluke 83 and here he needs a crop clip on him so the high voltage I'm just going to clip onto probe that we have there and then for our uh, earth return we're just going to clip onto the connection there that will be adequate for that doesn't matter that I've clipped a little bit onto the insulation we should still get a value um, again and now you can see we've got 1.092 volts on the Fluke 83 there, 1096 volts on the Chavanon New, and there's our 960 mega ohms, which is the insulation of the HV probe that we're using. So you can easily do that as long as your voltmeter can measure down at the one volt scale with some pretty good resolution. You can easily use one of these to measure the output of an insulation tester. So just before we move on to some other tests, uh, with these two instruments, we are back with. These two instruments in circuit I have connected up the insulation test function on the 1587 FC and measure voltage on the CA6526 because this instrument has auto voltage 
recognition uh, ACDC and it has a different input impedance so if I press the installation button here I've got 0 0.4 mega ohms input in impedance on this instrument 572 volts coming out and we've got 569 volts coming out so voltage measurement is pretty close um, however what the 0 0.4 mega ohm has done is loaded this instrument up too much so what I'm going to do is wire the HV Pro back into this so these come out and my insulation tester here needs the voltage probes going in so that's the output of the HV Pro there again we wire onto the terminal there and zero volts is around the back here that can stay the same again if we go again now we've got 1050 volts on the insulation tester coming out and we've got one giga ohm which is the input impedance of the probe um, but we don't have any voltage we've got 0.3 volts DC on there that's because this instrument doesn't really have a good millivolts measurement function and because the input impedance is 0.4 mega ohms on this instrument that doesn't match with the 10 mega ohm requirement for the high voltage probe therefore again you get you're not getting the one volt that it should be kicking out okay so i'll just knock this out of the way and we'll set up the 5 kv insulation test and we'll be able to see and we can measure the output of that with either of these two fluke instruments here so we've got our 5 kv insulation tester set up and we are on through our high voltage probe you can see the high voltage connection is over there from the 5 kV tester and the zero volts coming down here it's just on this lead here and I'm not so worried about lead placement with this one because this is a guarded terminal uh, so we don't get leakage between the leads in the same manner uh, we are set up for 5 kV so we'll press the go button and we should be looking for somewhere around about 5 volts on the 1587FC there um, our metro which you can't quite see is showing 5.05 5.06 kV and it's 4.977 so uh, reading slightly low with this uh, arrangement at this moment in time uh, we can just stop him and we'll just bring the 83 into the picture instead Yeah, press the go button again I'm reading 4.93 so I think that was a little bit lower anyway wasn't it so so there you go that's the HV Pro reading the output of a 5 kV insulation tester which is more in the line of what it can be used for uh, instead of a 1 kV insulation tester that you can usually get with the modern DMMs so just making a quick AC measurement with the high voltage probe I've got that uh, connected to the output of a boiler ignition transformer. Uh, this is connected to the primary of it, so I will control it's 230 volt primary to give uh, peak 11,000 volt output, uh, nominal 8,000 volt output, and it will vary that using the AC power supply here. I'm going to take a measurement with this Tektronix PA1000 power analyzer. The reason why I'm using this is because this uh, has a voltage scaling function within it uh, because we're on AC I will just verify the input impedance on this instrument which will be different to DC and there you have it it's 1.005 mega ohms there and you can see that my PA1000 here has actually responded to the voltage that this puts in to measure resistance and picked it up as a, a kilovolt uh, measurement so we put that to one side because we are on one mega ohm input impedance, we are on 2000 uh, to one amp ratio. So I need to go there and scaling and volts. And there you can see I've put in my 2000 to one amp scaling factor into the instrument. So it will measure now the output from our HV Pro, but that'll put in there and record it as a KV signal. Now this is obviously getting a little bit more tricky previously where we are on insulation testers that are a bit more refined, a bit more controller over them. 
and a lot less power and this does have significant power behind it so things are tucked well and truly out the way and I am well and truly out the way uh, to prevent uh, me getting uh, zapped by anything. So we'll switch on, we'll wind this up in 10 volt segments. Uh, There's a bit of voltage on there before it sees any output. If you can see we're starting to go up now. Uh, it's got to 100 volts there, and we've got 3.6 kV. Two hundred volts there, and we're on seven point three kV. It's normally two hundred and thirty volts, so we should kick out uh, about eight kV at two hundred and thirty volts. There you can see two hundred and thirty volts. We're on eight point four kV. You perhaps hear a bit of crackling in the background. That's just the HV connection, um, so it lets you know it is live. Uh, what you're working with. So that's all working fine. I intend to use this as part of a setup for testing some VDE screwdrivers just to see how well they age, but that will be a long-term project over winter, I think. In fact, we'll wind this down now. We will switch off and earth up, and then we can do a final summary. So there you go. That's a few tests carried out on this HV probe. Um, this one I actually picked up from eBay for around about £55. Uh, there are numerous different types of these available uh, from cheap Chinese ones uh, available on Aliexpress all the way up to uh, Fluke ones for about £150 I think Fluke uh, sell theirs for um, I don't think I'd go for a cheap Chinese one uh, unbranded one uh, these Testec ones uh, that was a pretty good price for Testec but these seem to be uh, fairly reasonable so if you use them with care they're perfectly safe to use but that'll be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.